think of the Paul brothers? I like them now. What they've built and what they've created, unreal. Who's a YouTuber that you think sucks? You ever heard of Jack Doherty? Yes, yes. He is gonna regret a lot of the things that he's doing. Where do you see your YouTube journey going long term as you age? All real estate. Welcome into the podcast, another episode of Living Large. Today's guest has 2.75 million subscribers on YouTube, 4.3 million on TikTok, and 3 million on Facebook, but he's short of a million on Instagram. Welcome to the show, Stephen Shapira. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Hey. Dude, thank you for having me in your home in Arizona. Hey, my home is your home. I gotta say, Arizona is a beautiful place. It is, but you haven't come in the summer. Summers are brutal. Oh, I always come in the summer. Oh, wow. <laughs> We are starting off with a bang here, <laughs> and I like it. I, uh, well, I'll look out for you in the summer then, I guess. What made you move to Arizona? Because you were born and raised in Florida. Yeah, born and raised in Florida. I actually went to college at uh, ASU. Did you pick it because it's number one party school? That had something to do with it, but yeah. also, uh, do you want the 100% truth? Yeah, 100%. My brother went to USC. Okay. Couldn't get into USC. Damn. So I was like, next best thing. I should have done a community college and then go into USC, mm -hmm. but... I had a cousin who went to ASU, and he was like raving about how amazing it was. It's like, all right, I'll do it. What did you want to go to USC for, a film? No, uh, for business, actually. Okay. I had no idea that I wanted to do anything related to social media mm -hmm. until, really, I ended up doing that video with Dawson, which I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. That's how you got your start. So you won a fan competition yeah. with Dawson. How did you even get into this competition? Dude, so it was super simple. It was, I think all you had to do was follow him on Snapchat. Okay. And I thought to myself, okay, this is probably bullshit mm -hmm. because, you know, like everything in social media is kind of like fabricated, right? right? So I'm thinking like, okay, he's probably doing this to get followers on Snapchat, but he won't actually pick a winner. Mm -hmm. I won't. And I was like, dude, this is insane. I remember opening that Snapchat because he said he was going to announce the winner. And he said my name like, he was like, congratulations, Steven Ch Chapiro. I'm like, dude, that's, that's insane. And I actually won. What was that feeling like when you won? Because it had to have been like a lottery, dude. 100%. I, I'm sure, like, I can imagine there were probably, I don't know, 40, 50,000 people who mm -hmm. entered. And so to be that single person who won was, I don't want to say... I, I think saying like best moment of my life would probably be yeah. a little bit of an exaggeration, but like it was one of those like holy shit kind of moments where like this, it took me a while to realize it was real. But it kind of might be the best moment of your life because it changed your whole entire life. It started my career. Yeah. Like I would not be here if that didn't happen. Were you doing social media content when you entered the contest? No. So I was actually working a normal corporate job. Mm -hmm. I was working for Yelp. Um, I was an account executive there and I was doing really well, but uh, I knew that it, like normal nine to five grind just wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. And so I was making like some fun videos with my brother. Like mm -hmm. we have a video where um, I put on like a woman's bathing suit and I was living in San Francisco at the time. Okay. And have you ever seen like Fast and the Furious where like the sexy girls like start the races? Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to be that sexy girl, like go out into traffic and try to start races. So I was like doing videos like that. And I think that's one of the videos Dawson saw where okay. he was like, you know, this guy might actually have what it takes to make a prank video with me. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that was a huge factor as to why I won. What made him like want to help you? And did he sign you or how did this process work? No. So, um, flew out to San Diego. Basically the whole thing was like, spend a weekend with me mm -hmm. in this mansion that he rented in San Diego and make a prank video. So we ended up, you know, obviously hanging out, like really connecting and getting along. We made the prank video. The prank video did really well. Mm -hmm. Like all the comments were super supportive and everyone was liking it. And so we just kind of kept in touch after that. Did you have anxiety doing the prank? Oh, I was shit in my pants. Yeah. Yeah. How do you overcome that? Because I know, I mean, I wanted to be a prankster at one point. Yeah. And I tried to go film and, and do shit in public, bro. My heart, I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> Yeah, man. How it's, do you overcome that for someone that wants to start a prank channel? Like, Yeah, so the funny thing is the prank that I did with Dawson wasn't even just like a prank video. Mm -hmm. It was a pickup video. Okay. Like imagine never doing this once in your life and then somebody's like, yeah, so you're going to go out there and just do the scariest thing ever and just talk to women. Mm -hmm. And so 
funny thing too is Dawson's, uh, one of Dawson's partners at the time called me the night before and I was already shitting my pants because mm -hmm. it was like, I'm flying out to these people I don't know. And he's like, yeah, dude, it's going to be great. Like tomorrow, you're just going to pick up a bunch of chicks on the beach. I was like, as soon as I heard that, I was like, I'm not sleeping tonight. Like, yeah. there's no chance. And so really, it's all about that repetition. Getting out there, just like ripping the Band-Aid off at mm -hmm. first. You do that first one and you're, you know, terrified out of your mind. But then you realize, okay, it's not really that big of a deal. I saw you, I look back at your channel. Some of your earlier videos, you kind of attempted vlogging. Mm -hmm. And then they weren't doing too well. And yeah. then you really see a change when you start making prank videos. What made you make that transition? And why did you give up on vlogging? I... At the time, and this would probably be my biggest advice for anybody who wants to start social media right now, I at the time did what I thought other people wanted to see. Mm -hmm. And so when I did a prank and I saw the views were better, I was like, okay, people just want to see pranks. Mm -hmm. If I put out a vlog, it doesn't get as many views. So I'm like, people obviously don't want to see this, even though I enjoyed making the vlogs and not so much making the pranks, mm -hmm. right? So it was more so just the fact that the audience was telling me this is what I want to see, which is why I made that transition. Did you start to love it at least? Because that's kind of hard, I feel like, to, to do something that you don't necessarily want to do. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say I started to love it. Yeah. I started to accept it for what it was. Mm -hmm. Like, because at the end of the day, look at, look at my job. Mm -hmm. I get to go out and mess with people, you know, right. for a little bit, put it online and have people enjoy it and, you know, have it almost be like a therapy for them. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I can't complain about that. But like overall, did I ever, or do I ever love it? Not really. Have you ever had a period of time where you questioned everything you're doing and struggled? Five million times. Yeah? Yeah. How do you overcome that and keep going? Well, um, for me, I've kind of uh, put myself in a position where it's like, I got to maintain a certain bottom line. Mm -hmm you know, with other investments and things that I've done. And so that kind of lights a fire under my, my bum to keep going. Did you ever go a period with it without posting? The most I've gone without posting, I think in like five years is maybe two weeks. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's dedication. Yeah. Which is also another problem, like to be honest with you, yeah. like not taking that break, not having that release from social media, you go crazy. Do you obsess over it? I do, but maybe not in the way that a passionate creator would obsess over it. Mm -hmm. Like I obsess over it more so for that reason where it's like, I need to maintain that bottom line. So if I'm not making videos, if I'm not like progressing myself, then in my mind, I'm like, Oh, everything's just going to tank. Yeah. Everything's going to go down. It's terrifying. Mm -hmm. Like thinking about taking time off. Yeah. Which uh, I mean, you've, Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, I've lost tons of my audience because of the inconsistency Yeah, and it, it I mean, I, I, I put myself in this position and I'm trying to get myself out of it. it. It's definitely harder than it. I'd rather start at zero, to be honest with you. But are you happy you did it though? Like, are you happy you took that took time the break? Off? Like if you were giving me advice, I came to you and was like, I'm going crazy because I've been posting so often. Uh, no, because I, I wish I would have been able to manage my time better. Okay. And not get so overwhelmed. Cause I had my, I had so many things going on and I was just so overwhelmed yeah. and I think a, for a long time, I mean, the daily vlogging really wasn't that difficult because I was just filming it and I wasn't editing it. But then when I stopped daily vlogging, just because I got burnt out and I wanted to transition over to the podcast, um, I started making the videos again. And I actually, I enjoy the editing part, which is like what sucks for me mm. because I like editing. That's my favorite part. And that's where I can be creative. Um, but it's hard for me to find someone truly, in my opinion, that's better than me at editing. You're, I mean, like, not to gas you up, but you're mm -hmm. a fantastic filmmaker. Thank like, you. Like, I think that's, you have that core audience of people who are just, like, die hard for you. And I think mm -hmm. the reason being, and I, I mean, the reason why I like watching your videos, because, like, every single video follows a, a storyline. And, like, yeah. every video, like, you know you're going to get something that's, like, a little cinematic and a little, like, yeah. zesty. You know what I mean? Zesty. Zesty. <laughs> this is, it's my, my word of the day is yeah. zesty. Well, I think, you know where I faulted is relying on other people. Mm -hmm. A lot of my videos, because I, I mean, I went to school for broadcast journalism, but I started to do the tech stuff. So when I started to film for Logan 
And then I kind of adopted, I feel like, a David Dobrik style where I was filming more so other people rather than myself. Mm. And once those relationships kind of went their separate ways, I was like, oh, shit, I don't know how to make a video alone. That's, yeah. And that's something that you do really well. And, but yeah, I mean, I keep telling myself that I've done it once, twice. I mean, I've done it on every platform. I can, I can do it again. I know it's going to take time and it's a little bit harder, but I can do it with, if I just be consistent. And 100%. I mean, I talked to Dawson about this. He was like, told me I had to do something crazy. He's like, I mean, vlogging isn't the thing anymore. So that's where I'm struggling. It's like, yeah, vlogging isn't popular. Um, but like, look, maybe that goes back to my advice that I would tell somebody starting social media right now. It's like, <laughs> you know, fuck the views right now. Mm -hmm. Like, screw trying to be like, oh, the top of this, this, this. Like, do something that you're passionate about, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're passionate about these podcasts, mm -hmm. stay at it. Because yeah. in the long run, it's not a if, but when, right? It will work eventually. Right. And you're going to be so much happier doing something that you're passionate about as opposed to trying to just, you know, fit a square peg into a circle, right. you know, hole. Well, I'm seeing success with these on TikTok. Which oh, yeah, been they're crushing. Super refreshing, but I'm trying to get those fans over to YouTube and watch the full, full length thing. It's tough. And it, what is tough, too, is I've learned that if I post just the podcast and I don't promote it with a YouTube video on my main channel, the views don't do well, but if I promote it with a YouTube video and say, hey, I made a podcast, then it does well. Mm. So like now I'm like, okay, I have to make a podcast, I have to make a YouTube video to promote it, and I have to make TikToks, obviously. Someone, uh, he told me I should post the podcast on my main channel. What do you think about that? I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. You don't think it would just total... Well, what are the, what are the views like long form on YouTube for your uh, podcast on its separate channel? They used to be consistently fifty to a hundred thousand when I was making it once a week. Okay. And now it's anywhere from like three thousand to twenty. Okay. So I need to get it back up, obviously. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you were going to experiment, now's the time then. Yeah. Like when the views are lower. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a bad idea at all because, like, the people who are watching the podcast are the people who are passionate about you, and mm -hmm. you know, obviously, the guests that you're talking about. So. Yeah, maybe I'll try it. Why not? What did you, how did COVID impact your job? Because your, a lot of your stuff has to do with stranger interactions. Yeah, all of it, actually. Yeah. yeah, COVID was super tough because we had like this mental battle of like, okay, we want to obviously protect ourselves, but we also want to protect other people. Mm -hmm. And then it was also a, a massive image thing, you know? It's like, are we going to look like total assholes for getting out there and trying to talk to people and try to continue to make pranks? Mm -hmm. um, but then it's like, okay, but that's our job. Right. You know, so we were theoretically in the same position as a lot of people who, you know, quote unquote, lost their job, you know, so it was tough. And we found that when we did make videos with masks, they weren't really performing well because people like seeing the face, all the emotion. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you do? Did you do like videos from home, like tipping Uber drivers or? No, um, we kind of just worked around it. As, did as you get much clapped as online for it? You know, actually not too bad, mm -hmm. not too bad, which is really nice um, because everything we were doing was pretty safe. We were all wearing masks. We mm -hmm. were waiting until there were times where we could go out in public and like the government was saying it's okay to go out and everything. But that was a wild time. Did you go to Florida a lot for it? We did go to Florida quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Florida, <laughs> Florida's a wild place. So let's go back to the beginning when you first started with Big Doss TV. Mm -hmm. Who inspired you? Like, did he just say, hey, this is your job now? <laughs> like, what, who no. inspired you? What YouTubers did you look up to? Um, you know the crazy thing? I didn't really watch much YouTube. Mm -hmm. My brother is the one who got me into YouTube. And he, he started by watching a lot of the fitness influencers, like okay. Max Tuning, Christian Guzman, if you know who they are. Um, and I remember him telling me, he's like, dude, you got to start watching YouTube. Like, watch these people who, like, vlog and whatnot. And I kept saying to myself, like, why would I want to watch that when I could just do it myself? Mm -hmm. Um, and then I watched some Max Tuning and some Christian Guzman blogs and I was just hooked from there. Right. And then I started watching the pranks started coming in, um, like who man TV, like all of those OG like pranksters. And I was like, I already kind of mess with people on the daily anyway. Mm -hmm. Like this could be a super interesting avenue to uh, pursue. And that's when I started watching Dawson. Have you, cause you've been friends with Dawson for what, like seven years now? Yeah. Like five, six years now. Has you, how have you guys maintained such a good relationship over the years without getting into like business feuds or have you? Have no. you had difficult times? Really had none. No? Yeah. 
watch like he says something completely different. He's like, <laughs> yeah, Stephen's the worst, dude. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We, it's that question makes us sound like an old married couple. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like it's all about love and understanding. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've really we haven't had any big disputes. Like nothing. I think we're both or. <laughs> Maybe I won't say it. I'm I'm pretty easygoing. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I also like understand that sometimes people in business will know more than you when it comes to specific things. Mm-hmm. Like I know more than Dawson in a lot of things. And he knows more than me in a lot of things. But what we were trying to, you know, create is uh, you know, a prank YouTube channel. So like I looked up to him and I took his advice a lot. Mm-hmm. So Well, something really cool about you guys and you don't really see this often in Los Angeles is you guys are just normal dudes and mm-hmm. don't have an ego. And the moment I met you guys, it's just like, it's very easy to get along with you guys and you don't, neither of you act like you're the shit. Appreciate that. And yeah. yeah, I really admire that about you. What made you not go to LA? Because most people, when they get that social media success, they're like, we're going to Hollywood. I know, I know. Um, I never really, it was never really a, like excited about LA Mm -hmm. to be honest with you because everything you hear about LA is pretty terrible yeah to be honest with you like you hear the people are no offense of course you know which I to you as well like I don't Mm -hmm. see you as like a LA person you know but like you kind of hear that the people are stuck up yeah like everything's about money and like people will backstab you and especially when it comes to like influencing and like let's call it show business yeah like then the the everything just goes crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like nobody really cares about you. It's just, what can they get from you? And so it's like, why would I want to be somewhere that does that? You've done a lot of pranks. Has any prank ever gone too far or during the middle of it? You're like, Oh, this shit might escalate a gun pulled on you. Anything like that? (laughs) No cops called. So we like my philosophy with all of my videos is I wanted to keep something where like the whole family could enjoy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like we've, I've never really done anything that was like so aggressive that would cause, you know, any harm to anybody like mentally or Mm -hmm. like cops called or anything like that. I know that sounds super soft, but yeah, it's just like how we've decided to just move the channel. You do a lot of videos where you give back to people money. Uh, Have you done any homeless videos? Um, As in like giving back to the homeless? Yeah, yeah, for sure. How do you feel about people online who say that doing that is exploitive? What's your response to that? We get a lot of people who say that. Yeah. Right? And I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of different ways to look at it. I understand where they're coming from because all they see is one side. Mm-hmm. They see, okay, he's just putting them on camera just to get more views so he can make more money. Mm-hmm. But the way that I see it is I'm using my resources and what I've been you know, blessed and gifted with to help other people. Mm-hmm. Yes, do I put it online? Of course, but the reason that I do that is so I can make more money to continue this process. Mm -hmm. It's like I genuinely enjoy helping people. Like hearing people's stories and being able to, you know, aid them in whatever they're doing is such an amazing feeling. And I do that, I make more money, I can continue to do it. It's just, I understand where they're coming from, but I think it's super silly. Is there one of those interactions specifically that stands out to you and made a huge impact on your life? Yeah, so a lot of people, I actually just had one super recently. Um, a woman, I, I was doing paying strangers car payments. Mm-hmm. And so I went up to her and I just started a casual conversation. And as soon as I you know, asked her what her car payment was, she told me that I took out the money. It was like the most immediate you know, tears just falling down her face. She told me this whole story and she told me a lot off camera too. But she told me this whole story about how her you know, father was diagnosed with cancer and it's just, he's like the rock of the family, which a lot of these people who are dealing with these situations have a particular person who is just like the foundation to their family. Mm -hmm. And once they lose that person, it's almost like they're losing, you know, such a large part of their family. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, this woman was just like, you know, you can just tell when somebody's just an amazing soul. And just like they look into your eyes as opposed to just like around and you just like feel their warmth. Mm -hmm. And so uh, even just being able to do something as small as, you know, paying her car payment for a few months and just hearing her story and just giving her that moment of like quick sigh of relief for this month. It's just means the world. 
How do you come up with these video ideas of giving back? It's a lot of, I mean, the problem with YouTube right now is like everything's been done, right? Yeah. So you just try to think of an original spin off things that have already been done, right? Mm -hmm. Like the concept of handing out money to strangers has been done 5 million times. Mm -hmm. Like what have you not seen and what is something that's super important to people, especially in America, because and in Arizona, if you don't have a car and you can't drive, as you've seen. Yeah, it's hot. <laughs> it's hot and you're screwed, yeah. right? We don't have like good public transportation, so mm -hmm. you, know, you just think of like, what are the necessities and how can you help somebody achieve those necessities? When you film those videos, do you ever not use an interaction? So say you paid someone and like the reaction wasn't good or it was, like will you cut that out and be like, oh fuck, I just lost $1,000 and then I'm not gonna use it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's more so, like, yeah. yeah. If, the, if the reaction is just very, very dry, it's like, okay, we've helped someone, that's great, but that doesn't really help the greater cause of the video, I guess. What's the worst reaction you've ever gotten? Like when giving someone money or doing something nice? <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough question. It's more so just like people who are not necessarily grateful mm -hmm. and like almost like act as if it was just expected. Mm -hmm. You know, like you'll give someone money and they're just like, sick. You're like, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> no worries. See you, bro. Yeah. But I mean, and that's, it is what it is. Yeah, you can't yeah. expect them to be like drop no. to their knees and start crying. Oh, no, absolutely not. Um, yeah. Oh my God, I had a question and I totally forgot it. Um, have you ever, have you done anything like that before? I did a, I did a video uh, giving a hundred burritos to the homeless. Nice. And for the most part, like every interaction was pretty good. We went down to like Skid Row in Los Angeles. It's rough. <laughs> there was one specific interaction. I obviously didn't put it in the video, but I gave this homeless guy a burrito and he like looked at it and he was like, fuck your burrito and just smashes no it on the ground way. and i was like bro like someone could have eaten that yeah. like but that was that was it um and i did some stuff you know giving back to charity and for christmas and stuff like that but nice like i said I, it's very hard for me even when i'm doing something nice to just talk to a stranger you have this like crazy ability why, why do you think that is like what bro i don't even go up to girls in the club or anything like that i can i don't know i just mind my own business have you always been like this yeah yeah were you were you chubby kid chubby yeah or early on yeah early I went on. through puberty probably like 13 14 yeah definitely was chubby and i went through puberty later than most yeah me too yeah i was a super chubby kid mm -hmm. and i also had like pretty bad buck teeth mm. so <laughs> that was a I was a liquor. Yeah. And so, but like that made me get like a little bit more into comedy. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I was like, okay, what's my outlet here to like get people to kind of accept me socially? And it was comedy. Well, I, I mean, I, yeah, I always had to be funny as well. Yeah. But I don't know. I had just the social anxiety about it. Maybe if I, maybe I'll do a video with you. Yeah, dude. And you could just be in my ear or something telling me what Anytime. to say. Um, so you're married. Yeah. But you do a lot of videos where you pick up girls. How does your wife deal with that? She does not care at all. No? No. Zero. Because she understands it's my job. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, side note, I actually haven't done one for like five or six months now, mm -hmm. a pickup video. Because like I'm just done with those personally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she, she just completely understands. Like she is the most understanding and just like beautiful person inside and out. Mm -hmm. And like... You just need that kind of person who gets you fully. Right, right. Um, do you tell the people afterwards? Like, hey, by the way, this is just a video. I'm married. Every single person. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where do you put the phone numbers or do you delete them? I don't even, I don't save them. Oh, you don't yeah, save yeah, them? Yeah, no, no, no. Because I always see comments. People are like, this dude's probably got 20,000 <laughs> phone numbers in his phone. They're like, oh, man, what'd I do to see this guy's Rolodex? Yeah, it's yeah. like, who has a Rolodex anymore? <laughs> it's crazy. Who's Olivia? Oh, okay. <laughs> Olivia, damn, dude. The Olivia clip is so viral. Why? Anytime. I don't know. It's like, I really don't know because she's also like completely like covered in like snow gear mm. or like winter gear. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's like, you can't even blame it on like, oh, people just want to see like sexually exploit or like whatever. Yeah. It's like, I guess people just really vibed with her energy and like... <laughs> The amount of comments, 
I bet if I go through my comments and I just search Olivia, yeah. my computer would break. Yeah. It would just explode. Every single video I look at of yours, the comments are, where's Olivia? Where's Olivia? <laughs> it's like I've literally like, I've hidden her somewhere. You yeah. know, people like trying to find her. Did you ever do anything with her after? Like, a, like did she reach out after the video at all? Um, we... We talked for like two seconds because she was like, holy shit, this is going crazy. And I was like, mm -hmm. I know, like it, it is. But like, that's, that's it, yeah. You should have done a follow-up. I know, I should have done a podcast with her and yeah. be like, how does this feel? Because that went crazy viral. Insane, dude. Have yeah. you had a, any, you, you ask the people afterwards, right? If it's okay to be on camera? Yeah, every person. Does anyone ever say no? And what for is that sure. like? Yeah, some people will, are just not interested in being on video. Some uh -huh. people, yeah, they, they just like feel very secretive. But like the way that I've always looked at it is I'm coming up to you mm -hmm. and fucking with you. Yeah. You didn't ask me to do that. So it's like, I'm not going to be like, oh, dude, come on. You've got to be in this video. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like, you didn't ask for this. You know what I mean? Um, and so we either, depending on which state we're in, we either blur their face because different states have different laws of what mm. you're able to do um, or just don't use the clip. Has you, have you ever had someone tell you after the fact, like, a, like an Olivia, for example, where it goes crazy viral and they're like, hey, can you take that down? Yeah, for sure. How do you approach that? Because they changed their mind. Do you take it down? Take it down. Really? Yeah. It kind of goes back to the being squeaky clean thing with like the actual content. Mm -hmm. Like because this is my job and because this is how I provide for myself and my family, it's like I don't want to risk mm -hmm. anything like somebody trying to sue me and just going through unnecessary bullshit. Have you been sued? No. Luckily, not. Have you? No. No. Yeah, I had an ex-girlfriend threatened to sue me one time. Really? I was like, here's That's my fun. email. Tell your lawyers to email <laughs> yeah, me. <laughs> right? I'll be waiting for the yeah. email. Yeah. <laughs> I knew she wouldn't do it. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Luckily not. I uh, just want to stay as far away as possible from that. We do get people who say, like, if I see my picture online, I'll see you. Which, dude, these young creators now... Mm -hmm. This like, I guess they are called the mic'd up cult. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -mm. So mic'd up cult are kind of like the people who have followed in the Danny Duncan footsteps. Okay. It's like they're just mic'd up and they're just walking oh, around. Oh yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Bailey Levine, that type of guy. Exactly. Yeah. And they're just, they're just fucking with people like hard, but like to piss them off. Mm -hmm. They're not fucking with people to like confuse them. Yeah. Like, my stuff is like, I'm going to confuse you yeah. and make you think that I'm the weirdest guy in the world. Their stuff is like, I'm going to make you just angry, yeah. right? And they get these people so angry, but then they still use the reaction, like no blurring. Yeah. Crazy. I, I mean, they're re reckless. reckless. I mean, it's going to come back to haunt them at it's some point. Um, have you had any beef with any YouTubers? No. No? No. Have you collab? Who are some big collab collabs you've done? I really haven't even done that many collabs either, to be honest with you. I just like, I stay in my own lane. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like sometimes that's just the best thing to do. Obviously Dawson, Big Doss mm -hmm. TV, that was epic. Um, I just did a video with Sarah Safari. You know who that is? The bodybuilder girl? Uh-huh. Yeah. She was awesome. What'd you guys do Super together? Nice girl. Uh, I have this one video that I've done previously called the girl bully prank. So mm -hmm. it's like reversing, you know. The like classic, just a guy's getting bullied by a girl mm. on a college campus, which is fun. Um, and she was awesome, like super, super nice girl. What did you guys do? Like, like she bullied people? She walked up no, to Oh, she them, bullied or? me. Oh, she bullied yeah, you yeah, in it, front of people? Exactly, yeah. When's that video come out? Already did, came okay. out like two weeks ago or something. How'd it do? Really fucking terrible. It, really? It got demonetized immediately. Why? I For think harassment? the word bully, yeah, harassment. That's and unfortunate, because so. she's really, Popping. Yeah. Like she's, she's her, sure. I see her face everywhere with the Bradley Martin podcast. Yeah. I would think that that would perform extremely well. Yeah. Unfortunately. Tell not. her she's got no pool. Yeah. Dude, she, I was you, expecting you, this to do well. Now you got beef with the YouTuber. There you go. I'll start it for you. Thank Sarah, you. Sarah, you have no pool. No pool. <laughs> but I won't fight you because you'll kick my ass probably. Yeah, she's so. pretty swole. She's uh, pretty swole. She's intimidating. Yeah, I mean, you know how that goes. I like you. Uh, do you ever get videos demonetized? All my most of I just actually just looked today and most of the my top videos are red. Really? And I'm gonna go in and figure out why. But I used to use like copyright songs. Oh, okay, that's probably why. And then four years later they got taken down for some reason. Like I used to use the song selfie, but first. I, I would put that in my vlogs. Literally just but first. 
and, and they, that got claimed? They claimed, bro, I sang a Green Day song one time, American Idiot as a joke. And I, I was like, watch, they're gonna claim this video. Next day I claimed it. You're just too good, dude. Like, can't, can't be singing like that. It was ridiculous, dude. That's crazy. They have some weird, weird rules. So mm. you're running into an issue right now with Facebook. Yeah, huge. What's, uh, why did your page get removed? So back in the day, creators would reach out to each other and be like, hey, I like your videos, can I use them? And in exchange, I'll tag you. So like my audience will go over to your page, you'll grow your page, um, and then you know, I'll post a video, grow my own page, but also you know, get revenue from it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had a video from literally four and a half years ago that randomly got claimed now nine months ago. And it did something worse than demonetization. It did non-recommendation. Mm -hmm. So it's like I have almost four million followers and I'll post a video, it'll get like, Three, four hundred views. Yeah. Which is devastating because Facebook is a really large portion of revenue for us, you know? And so just to have that taken away for something kind of so ridiculous, it's like they could have just told me what the problem was and I would have gotten rid of the video. Right. No problem. I didn't even remember that I had the video up mm -hmm. and it's gone. Can't get in touch with anybody. How do you pivot from that? And like, because yeah, you, lo you lost a huge source of income. Huge. Um, and it's kind of not your fault. Like the video in question was, you someone depanced someone, right? But still wearing clothes. Like, yeah, yeah, and they said for, the for nudity or something. Sexually aggressive behavior. Yeah. I was like, what? So I like to look at everything as like a blessing in disguise, right? Mm -hmm. So that was a huge part of my revenue and it was just taken away like that. But what it did for me is it really showed me how fragile like everything that we do in the social media space is and how quickly anything can just be taken away from you. Like, I could wake up tomorrow and my YouTube, my TikTok, everything could be demonetized. And then what? Mm -hmm. So it really put me in the headspace of like, okay, I gotta figure out things outside of social media to start generating income. Mm -hmm. And so um, luckily I started to already get into real estate investing and that's kind of my passion and where I'm, where I'm headed. Yeah, talk about that a little bit because I know you're starting a new YouTube channel with real estate. What's yeah. the goal there? So the goal with that channel is to teach people to be as relatable as possible and teach people how to invest into real estate because I think there's so much money to be made and there's so many of these like bullshit gurus mm -hmm. on YouTube and social media that are like, do you want to see how I woke up this morning and had coffee and 12 of my Lamborghinis? Yeah, yeah. It's like, this is not fucking realistic. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I want to be just like a raw, realistic channel and teach people how to invest in real estate. And so we, uh, the channel is called Flipping Fortunes. Mm -hmm. So a big portion of the channel is flipping houses, but then also like the tagline, like we want to teach you how to make a flipping fortune. That was kind of clever. You know, You're so. a smart man, thanks, dude. Thanks, thanks, thanks. So uh, yeah, the hope is just to get as many people watching that and eventually have that take over like my whole social media presence. So is your goal to flip houses then sell them or do you own s properties? What's your real estate portfolio look like and are you airbnb or what? Yeah, so I have six houses out here in Arizona. Um, it's a mixture between long-term and short-term rentals. So the short-terms are Airbnb. Okay. And long-term is just like, you need a place to stay. I'll rent it out for you for 12 months. And then the houses that we're flipping for the channel, we're buying that are just like, in really shitty condition, mm -hmm. renovating them, making them look beautiful, and selling them. But we show that entire process. Okay. Yeah. What, what, comes, what brings more revenue, Airbnb or long-term rental? A guru would tell you Airbnb. Mm -hmm. But what the guru doesn't tell you is how many expenses go into running an Airbnb. And so with that, I would say long-term. Give me some examples, elaborate. Because I'm sure there's a lot of people who would love to get into real estate. 100%, yeah. One of the biggest deciding factors is if you're gonna manage it yourself or if you're gonna hire somebody to manage it. If you hire somebody to manage it, there's 15 to 18% of your bottom line gone. Mm -hmm. Then you have all of your essentials fees. Like, if you're gonna be a good host, right? Like, am I gonna get new towels and new you know, amenities for the place? Am I gonna have life jackets for kids because there's a pool. Mm -hmm. You know, am I gonna have a uh, baby uh, cradle? You know, cr 
crib, 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 <laughs> yeah, baby <laughs> cradle. Um, you're gonna do all those things, right? So it's like there's so many expenses that add up. Whereas the long terms, it's like you get somebody in there, you set it, you forget it, you get all the tax benefits that come along with it, and you just get that like quote unquote guaranteed monthly income that's gonna come in. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Airbnb is gonna be, you have some great months, yeah. you have some shit months, and it's all dependent on if people are visiting, if people are traveling, and if they're not, you're screwed. Have you had any Airbnb horror stories? Luckily not. Really? That's yeah, good. I, I've been, very, I don't even think that's wood to be honest. Um, I've been very, very lucky. Um, people have been good so far. Mm -hmm. We did just have a guy who complained about every little fucking thing. What's your rating on there? Like 4.67. How did you build that? Because I know early on when you get no rentals, doesn't it take a while to get recommended? It does, but the guy who I hired to run it is a super host. So the property immediately off the, off the rip was like being recommended to people and we were getting reservations pretty quickly. So you don't have the account? You have it through someone else? I have somebody else manage it. So like okay. I have the account, I can see everything, but they manage it. Did you do that because he's already a super host? That was one of the reasons. And then the other is just because I'm so busy with what I do, call the videos and whatnot, I didn't want to be in, you know, Nebraska filming a video yeah. and then get a phone call saying like, oh, this is happening right now. It's like, I, I wouldn't be able to do anything. So you do lose that 15 to 18% then. Right off but the rip. But it makes you have more time for your other stuff too. Exactly. Um, where do you see your YouTube journey going long term as you age? All real estate. Yeah. I, I want to go, I, I'm having a dilemma. Maybe you can weigh in on this. Like I want to go a hundred percent into this new channel, Flipping Fortunes. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, if I do that, then I lose all the revenue from you know, everything else, which is the yeah. bankroll to be able to purchase the properties, to be able to do mm -hmm. all the renovations and, and things like that. But it's like, because I'm not going 100% on it, it's not getting 100% of my effort. And so I think the growth is gonna be much slower than if I just went like balls to the wall, cranking it. How many videos are you posting on there? We haven't started yet. Oh, okay. Because I want to stack because I want to be consistent. Are you, I mean, are you, you're, I'm assuming kind of vlogging, like the work mm -hmm. and stuff and the flip? Yeah. So think like HGTV. Yeah. Dumbed down to YouTube. So it's like we have the HGTV quality per se mm -hmm. when we're doing like the befores and afters and the walkthroughs, but dumbed down in the sense where we're going to put some jokes in there. We're going to have mm -hmm. some fun. Like maybe we'll show us golfing or like just being normal people as opposed to just like showing up in a suit, you know, trying to explain like the different wall colors and shit. It, who's us? So it's myself and then I have two partners that I joined up with who are two like very seasoned real estate investors here in Arizona, mm -hmm. uh, Jake and Luke. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you involve your wife in anything you do? <laughs> no, we have a channel. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, that's right. You yeah. used to do like- uh... We have almost 100K. That's sick. Yeah. Do you run that or does she run that? Well, let's <laughs> just say if she ran that, there wouldn't be as many videos on there. Yeah. Um, no, I, I run it. But you know what's funny? She, she gets on my ass all the time about recording. Because like I come home after doing my videos, like yesterday, for example. Mm -hmm. I left at four in the morning for San Francisco. I got back at midnight. Mm -hmm. and it's like, I wake up today. Do I want to go film another sit down video? I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. Oh man, but, I'm sorry. I'm kidding. No, 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 no. Dude, that sounded so bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're like, God, God fuck, Mark's no, coming over. No, 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 no. I, I'm very, very happy to be doing this. That's not what I meant. Um, like, do I want to sit there and do like a who knows who better? Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like, no, not, not really, not really, but. But I will, you know, I will. And she gets on my ass about it. Yeah. But it's funny. Those used to be my like filler videos for when I didn't have a vlog. Totally. totally. I'd be like, all right, let's sit down with my girlfriend and do a fucking Q&A. 100%. Dude. And it's like you're sitting there pulling your teeth out. You're like, God, I, just, I would rather do anything other yeah. than this right now. But you know what? I like, I see the long-term vision, right? Like if we can get this to pop and people like really enjoy her and I together, mm -hmm. then like, for example, we filmed our entire honeymoon. That was mm -hmm. awesome. I literally got to travel, experience new things. We went to Croatia, Greece, Montenegro, Italy, and like just filming and having a good time. Like if it can turn into just full on, like people like seeing us travel, is there anything better than that? Yeah. I mean, that's the dream, right? Yeah. 
So you got to go through the shit to get to the good stuff. Talk about you just went to San Francisco. What, what did you do with the Cybertruck and how did you get that opportunity? Yeah, so I filmed, uh, I'm working on the title, but essentially like picking up Uber riders, but I'm in a Cybertruck. So is that really the concept of the video? Not necessarily because I just pulled up on people mm -hmm. and was like, I'm your Uber. And they're like, yeah. what? I'm like, get in. <laughs> they're like, okay. Um, but I just, I rented it on Turo, to be mm. honest. Oh, I, really? I, I didn't even try to see if I could find one because I was so like... So you went all the way to San Fran to, just to rent a Cybertruck? There aren't any here. Yeah. Really? I mean, you could have come to LA. True. I looked on Turo. I didn't see any. How much did you have LA. to pay for one day on Turo? 1500 For one day? Not even. I mean, t 10 hours, if that. Was it worth it? I think so. I is had a great sick? time, dude. It's sick, bro. It you get a lot of cool. looks? I felt like Justin Bieber. Like literally Justin Bieber. Every single person and their mother that I drove by was taking pictures of me. Like if I rolled down my window, all I heard was, oh shit, it's a cyber truck. <laughs> I'm like, bro, this is crazy. You park somewhere, people start coming up. This I thought was really weird. I was parked just waiting uh, for somebody that I could do the next scene with. I parked. People are coming up, like, touching it and, like, leaning on it, taking pictures. I'm like... While you're in the car? While I'm in the car. I'm like, what are you <laughs> going to do if I'm not in the car? That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, people are going nuts over it. It's crazy how just a piece of tech is so, like... Like you said, you felt like Justin Bieber just because of the car you drove. Yep. Do you think you're going to get one? I already have one ordered. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've had one ordered for years. Yeah. When's it supposed to come in? No idea. No idea. Did you have to put money down or was it like a hundred bucks, right? 200 bucks, yeah. And then do you have to make the decision if you want it or something? Yeah. So I'll get an email that'll basically say like a VIN has been assigned to you. Mm -hmm. And then you can choose like, do you want this one, this one, this one? There's three different options. And then uh, I think after that, it comes pretty quick. You mentioned, because we FaceTimed yesterday when you were doing it. So we talk about the steering. And yeah. you said the, the wheel doesn't fully rotate. Dude, it literally goes this far and it's ridiculous because like both the wheel wells are moving the back ones as well yeah both the wheel wells are moving and the turning radius is amazing can like, you like shift them totally sideways and like parallel park <laughs> i wish you know the hummers can do that the ev hummers no i didn't know that yeah that's insane and if i'm wrong about that i'm so sorry <laughs> but i don't think i am i'm sure a lot of people want to know this question have you ever faked the prank never that's a lie. The only prank that I have faked. <laughs> the, only the other prank that I have faked. <laughs> Exposed. <laughs> the only pranks that I have faked. What the <laughs> fuck, dude? Only pranks that I have faked are pranks that I say that I have faked. You have a fake channel, yeah? Fake Pranks TV. What made you guys come up with this fake prank channel? Dude, it's genius. If you think about it, like all these videos that people are trying to pass off as real, mm -hmm. like are making a shit ton of money. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, why wouldn't we do it, but just say that we're doing it for entertainment purposes? Mm -hmm. So we named it Fake Pranks TV. That's hilarious. And literally people still comment. They're like, bro, what the fuck? This is fake. <laughs> like, how do people believe this? I'm like, dude, the name of the channel is Fake Pranks TV. Like, what are you fucking talking about? People on the internet are so gullible, bro. I don't, like, you can't make it clearer for these people. Well. It's, it's especially true in like foreign people, and I learned this. So I, my ex-girlfriend, she was Swiss, and yeah. she would send me TikToks. She's like, this is hilarious. And I'm like, this is so fake. <laughs> yeah, dude. How can you not see how fake this is? Yep. But I guess they don't, they don't hear the voice and stuff, and like true. can tell it's acting. Like the tone and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I was just like, it's crazy. There's a market for literally stuff that is so fake. Yeah. Who's a YouTuber that you think sucks? <laughs> You're really trying to start this beef stuff, huh? Well, I'm trying to, I'm thinking of the one guy that he makes those like um, spooky videos. What's that guy's name? Uh, I don't know. Or like the Ouija board ones. Or the... Oh yeah, I don't watch any of that yeah. shit. There is somebody in mind who I think, I'm not going to say he sucks because I, I get his grind and mm -hmm. he's hustling and I respect the shit out of it, but I think he's doing it in such a terrible way. Have you ever heard of Jack Doherty? Yes, yes. He is going to regret a lot of the things that he's doing. I agree. His live streaming stuff. and Dude. I just like, because I see clips on TikTok mm -hmm. that they'll be scrolling through. 
And like, he's just so disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And it's like, look, I get it, do your thing. And if I was 20 years old or 19 years old, however old he is, and had all his money at that age, mm -hmm. who knows what I'd be like? I have no idea. But like, dude. Well, it's like, you, you can't give, how old is he, 20 probably? I think he's 20. Probably yeah. less than that, honestly. Yeah. You can't give that type of person that much money. I mean, look, at it, it's kind of like a replication of Jake Paul. He went total ape shit. He's like an 18-year-old with $10 yeah. million, lighting mattresses on fire, <laughs> doing wheelies on the news station. Like, he yeah. went through that stage. Yeah. But thankfully, he's matured and, and grown out of it. Yeah. What do you think of the Paul brothers? What they've built and what they've created is unreal. Mm -hmm. Like they have created this, you know, whole empire. I like them now. Mm. Back in the day when like exactly what you were just talking about with like them kind of going crazy was the same way that I feel about Jack Doherty. I was like, I respect it because they built something amazing for themselves. But at the same time, it's like, you're going to regret that. Mm -hmm. And they probably do. Like, if you were to sit down and ask them, like, do you, well, I don't know, maybe they wouldn't, but yeah. you know what I mean? But, like, do you regret some of the things that you did when you were younger? I'm, I'm sure the answer has to be yes, whether they right. would say it or not. Do you look up to them in, in any way when you're shaping your business at all? <sighs> not necessarily. I think this might sound a little, like, self-deprecating, but I think in the YouTube sphere, there's echelons, mm. Right. Mr. Beast, Paul Brothers, are in this echelon. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are others, but I think those are just the most well-known, right? And those are the people who they could put a video out of them taking a poop, yeah. and it would get 5 million views, yeah. you know? And then there's the echelon of people who, like, have built a large audience, but their views are, like, unstable, right? Mm -hmm. And their audiences are unstable with them. Mm -hmm. Me. Not, yeah, me too, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. and it's because, like, here's kind of how I see myself. And again, here's the self deprecation mm -hmm. I see myself as a cartoon. Okay. No, stick with me here, right? Like, people love cartoons. There are some people who are die hard about cartoons and will, like, live by the sword, die by the sword for the cartoon. Mm -hmm. But most people can turn the cartoon off and never think about the cartoon, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like if I put out a video and it's not really what people are like, excited to see not gonna get views mm. you know what I mean you don't think you've built that star power exactly like these kids who have meet and greets and then like shut down cities mm -hmm. I'm not doing that shit you know what I mean do you want to or are you happy with what you have I'm happy with what I have yeah because I get a lot of the benefits without a lot of the cons yeah that's something I've learned honestly being down here just for a couple days and hanging out with you guys it's like there's something nice about living a normal life and not being engulfed in like the lifestyle stuff. Yep. It's peaceful here. I think time moves so much slower here than in LA. I don't know what it is. And I just realized this the other day when I was talking to someone, I was like, dude, it takes me like an hour to go to the gym and back. And that's an hour lost. Yeah. And just driving to whatever, to West Hollywood from my place is 30 minutes and then 40 back. Like I'm spending so much of my days and I feel like that's why they go by so fast is because I'm wasting so much time. That's fair. Do you think you're going to stay in LA? Or Fuck no, dude. Okay, <laughs> you're out. All After right. this Arizona's trip. Arizona's waiting for you, bro. Dawson told me I could move into the dropout house. Do it. He said I could live in there. I don't know if I could do that though. Yeah, I wouldn't do that if I were <laughs> He's got like 10 employees walking in and out. <laughs> I'm um, uh, like, have a girl over. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, okay, what, who the these your brothers or what's going on? Have you had any crazy moments that happen at your place or anything like that? Because Dawson <sighs> talked about a naked man breaking his femur. Yeah, dude. Um, did he also talk about the Green Goblin? No. Yeah, oh, yeah, he did. The spray paint guy? Spray paint guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the problem is... Uh, I'm not going to say that because that <laughs> might give away a little bit of geographically where the house is. But mm -hmm. uh, those were two insane... like occurrences and you know what the funny thing is too like i'll be at the gym or something and like obviously people know that i'm connected to that house too mm -hmm. so like i've actually spoken to several of the like ems and fire department that have that went out for those calls mm -hmm. and they were like dude those guys were absolutely fucked out of their mind like that is some crazy shit luckily i live in a different area mm -hmm. 
than that, things are very safe and very calm here. Like nothing bad happens here. Yeah. What, what were they on? Did they figure it out? Probably just, I, I don't know. Like the dude who broke his femur had to be on some crazy shit. Dude, that. Did you see the video? Yes. Yeah. You hear that thing yeah. pop? Yeah. Bro. Why was he naked? One. <laughs> I mean, I, I respect it. Like that's. Do you think it was a fan? Or do you think it was I just... really don't. Because honestly, like, when I pulled down that street, I looked at the house, I'm like, oh, that's the fucking, that's their house for sure. Yeah. Like, it does stand out. And it kind of doesn't really fit the neighborhood at all. No. No HOA. It's just like, yeah. do what you want. There is no HOA here? In that neighborhood? No. Oh, okay. I have one, but. Oh, okay. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I, there was like a big Mormon family who lived there before. So mm. they use like every single bedroom. <laughs> house looks entirely different, obviously. Yeah. yeah. It's a crazy house. I mean, it's huge. Sick. Yeah. yeah. Super sick. Uh, there's one video that you did that was hilarious and it stands out to me. You went and got a haircut and you literally got a haircut yeah. and tipped the lady like 700, 800 bucks. Yeah. What was that video like? I'm like, Dude, it was great. It, it was like, that was actually one of the first give back videos that I did. Mm -hmm. so I did it right when I hit a million subscribers. It's like, you know what, I'm gonna start getting into the, the give back game. I gotta give something back. And so I went in and you could just tell she was one of those ladies who like right off the bat had the best energy. She was like so happy. And so I told her, cause I wanted to add some like comedy spin to it. So mm -hmm. it was like lighthearted more so than just like the give back. And so I told her that I had like haircut striovia or something where I'm like <laughs> afraid of haircuts. And she was like, oh, okay, well, I've been doing this a really long time. Like, you don't need to worry. She cut a single hair and I was like, oh, yeah, no, that looks great. She's like, that's all, that's all you wanted? I was like, yeah, that's, that's it. And she would not let me pay. I was like, yeah, let's go check out, let me pay. She's like, I'm not charging you for that. And then her classic line that everybody like leached onto, she said, she was like, you wanna pay me for a snip snip? <laughs> and like the snip snip went crazy, dude. Everyone like loved the snip snip. And so I was like, well, let me just give you a tip at least. And she was like, okay, fine, you can give me a tip. I start pulling out hundreds. And again, just immediate emotional. She didn't have enough money for rent. And so that like saved her by you know, having the money for rent. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, that clip, just people absolutely love her. And it just went nutty. Has there been a video where you went into it not expecting to have such an emotional reaction to it? Have you ever you know, broken down from, in tears from one of your own videos? I've, I've wanted to. Mm -hmm. I like this is gonna sound really strange given what I do as like a quote unquote comedian. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty emotionless most of the time. Mm. Like it's difficult to make me like genuinely laugh. It's difficult to make me genuinely cry. But there's definitely been times where people are like telling their story where I'm like, damn, I can relate and empathize with you so much because that would kill me on the inside. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone specific? It's really all these people that I've already mentioned. Mm -hmm. That woman Shannon, woman Tiffany. It's like when people are looking at you and like pouring their heart out and telling you like legitimately you are helping me, well, it just makes you feel some kind of way. It's pretty cool that you obviously get to help people, but you're sitting here and you remember these people by name. Yeah. And you've made hundreds of videos and it's pretty, speaks a lot to you to, to still know their names. Appreciate that, Frank. I think you're a good, genuine dude. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bad joke. <laughs> No, I honestly I, didn't catch it until like <laughs> after I said what I had to say. No, I appreciate that, dude. Do you ever uh, have people like try to get more money out of you? No, no. Like, oh, keep not. Like, yeah. like, oh, here's you have 500 more? bucks. He's like, oh, actually, uh, you know, rent's two grand this <laughs> yeah. month. Yeah, luckily not. No? Luckily not, no. Is it ever awkward? Sometimes what's a little bit uncomfortable is, again, like we talked about earlier, I always tell people that I'm filming a video. Like I'd never want to film somebody have them not know, then post it, and then see themselves online. So sometimes going back and telling them that, you know, we're making a video, because like the whole situation is confusing. Like why did someone just come up and randomly yeah. give me money? And so that offers them clarity and then again, lets them know that they're online. Uh, sometimes that can be a little uncomfortable. Going up to them after and be like, hey, I filmed you? Yeah. yeah. But I'd say 99.9% .9 of the time, people are like, okay, that makes so much more sense, but still, thank you so much. Like, they just get it. Mm -hmm. It's a world we live in. What, what would you say is the most challenging or most difficult video you've ever made? That is a really good question. 
I'll get here. How, how was the one when you went to like Hooters and you ate your food before she got back and you threw it in your backpack? <laughs> yeah. That, I, I, I kind of love doing shit like that because yeah. again, like I aim to confuse people. I don't aim to piss people off. So it's like nothing's really too terribly difficult. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things are really cringe. Mm -hmm. Like uh, they just make you feel super uncomfortable. And so before each scene, you're like, you got to sit there and be like, all right, fuck it. Here I go. You just embrace the cringe. You embrace the cringe. That's, That's what it. I've learned too. When I was uh, promoting my song Threesome, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to make some fucking cringy TikToks. But I know they're cringe. That's what I'm going for. Yeah. Because I know this is going to do well because it's cringe. 100%. And the thing is, bro, everyone forgets. That's what I've learned with like TikTok and stuff. Everybody's just scrolling, scrolling. You're not, you, no one remembers what they saw yesterday or even an hour ago. 100%. And that's, what do you think of the, the shift in social media to that kind of content? Because I remember, I, actually, I was, I was looking at my DMs, bro. You DM'd me back in 2020 and you said you saw my podcast and oh, yeah i remember that yeah you were like i was talking about as i'm growing older how do i transition with the younger kids uh what do you think of that and how have you managed to do that yeah so i mean obviously it's no surprise we've transitioned to this like major short form content push where mm -hmm. everything's just like bop, 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 you know a million miles an hour and it's kind of sad to be honest with you like our attention spans are so short um, and as these kids are getting older, it's just like, they just want more and more and more mm -hmm. quicker, quicker, quicker. And, um, yeah, it's a bit depressing. It really is. Yeah. Do you find it challenging to have to make content for five different platforms? Luckily for my type of content, no, because yeah. we have the ability to repurpose everything. Like, I think you're in a much more challenging, you know, situation like that because mm -hmm. you need to sit there and specifically be like, okay, how can I make TikToks? How can I make shorts? Yeah. I'm very fortunate, very lucky that I can just take clips from my videos and uh, repurpose them. Yeah, I need to figure out a, a way to do that, honestly. Yeah. But I think, again, it comes down to what you said, kind of that like star power, right? Like you have the ability to build a much stronger connection with people by creating original short form mm. content. Yeah. Which, I mean, could be a good play for you to promote the podcast too. So like get people invested in you. Right. And then the yeah, people that's you what bring I, on. I want to do one episode a week where I interview someone, mm -hmm. but I also want to do an episode where I get to talk. Yeah. Because I would love for my face to be on my TikTok. You yeah, know? yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like you go to my page and I'm not even on there. Well, Fair. So I need to like start building up my brand again. Uh, I'm just, I mean, it, it'll happen with repetition and like for sure. practicing and learning, but. Yeah. I like that idea though. A lot. Like even... Have you ever thought about doing um, almost like a second podcast per se that's simply for TikTok and making it just a short form podcast? Like a quick, like 45 second, here's your 45 second, you know, yeah. snafu of Mark Donner. I mean, I did one episode where I was like, hey, I'm only doing this for TikTok. Like, I just want to get a few clips and I'm not, I didn't post it to YouTube, mm -hmm. but maybe. Yeah. I mean, I would love to sit down and talk. Yeah. It's just hard to just, for me at least, to just talk. Yeah. I need someone to ask me questions Fair. and like show interest. Um, what advice would you give someone starting off now? Would you tell them to start with TikTok? TikTok would definitely be a huge part of their plan mm -hmm. for sure. Because it's, it's so important. It's such a powerful tool right now. I, I realized it was a powerful tool when fans would come up and start saying like, Oh, I love your TikToks. And I was like, at first I was like, don't say that. Yeah, <laughs> love yeah. my YouTube videos. Don't love my TikToks. Yeah. But then it started happening more and more and more. I was like, holy shit, this is a powerful platform. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely recommend not only stacking up videos so you can remain consistent, but stacking up your short form as well. Because it is so important. Why do you think Instagram is so hard for you to grow versus the other platforms? Well, for one, I only post on there, I think like, once a week or once every two weeks because I'll just post one clip from a new video mm -hmm. as a promotion. I don't post photos mm -hmm. because they're all just like reels and videos mm -hmm. from my videos. And I don't know. Do you hate Instagram? Um, I don't hate it, but I'm finding it more and more unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Like I would love to get off it. Same. Yeah. I think it's just turned into a girl's app. Yeah. 
hundred percent. Like hundred percent. Girls love Instagram. I mean, like, most guys, in my opinion, love YouTube. Um, it, but I feel like it used to be really important. Yeah. Instagram. Did you attack YouTube Shorts at all? Yeah, yeah. For Did it sure. work for you? Yeah. Yeah. Did you convert into long form fans? Because I feel like a lot of people, like I have a friend who has like. Two million subscribers, all from shorts, and then he posts a long form video. It gets like five k. Sucks, views. right? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I mean, mine. I'm posting my shorts on my long form channel. Mm -hmm. So I post a new prank video every Sunday, and then Monday through Saturday, I'm doing a short form short uh, one a day, right? So from that video or from other videos? No, from anything. Okay. Yeah, and so I think I have a nice blend of bringing those short form uh, audience. And then also keeping my long form audience. But at first, when I started posting shorts, my long form views tanked. Really? But then I was like, you know what? I feel like this is just the way it's gonna be. And so I just kept doing it and eventually it came, came right back, back up. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're, uh, last question Where do you make your most money? <sighs> Where do I make my most money? Um, let's say probably brand deals. Really? Yeah. I thought Dawson said Facebook for him. I don't have a Facebook. Right oh, now. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot, dude. Well, I'm not saying like right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> Facebook was your highest paying platform? 100%. A lot of people sleep on it, too. Uh, keep sleeping. Yeah. You know, let, let, uh, let the non-sleepers take advantage of it. Damn. Yeah, Facebook for sure. Yeah, I remember back when I had my Facebook show, I was making so much money off the AdSense. Yep. And I was just like, no one knows about this. It's, it's so kind of cool. nice. Same thing with the TikTok creativity beta program. That's actually kind of nice, dude. Yeah. It's kind of nice. It pays pretty well. I mean, my CPM's crazy for a one minute video. It's like you sit here and you're like, dude, that took no effort. 100%. And uh, yeah, it pays really, really well. I think for us too. It's literally repurposing a clip that we already made. Yeah. And that's the cool thing about your content and now my podcast. It's like evergreen. Exactly. I was uploading podcasts from five years ago on there. Why not? <laughs> yeah. I was making more money from those than I did off the actual interview. 100%. Well, man, I appreciate you for having me in your home. Dude, thank you. Anytime. It's a pleasure. I've Go been ahead, a fan move of yours in. for quite some time. What happened oh. to your hand? Well, this one, I was moving a coffee table. Mm. And my wife pushed it and it just cut my damn hand. Mm. I was chopping down a tree. Yeah, 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 yeah. it was crazy. Check out Steven on all platforms. I'll link him down below. It was an honor. I hope you guys learned something from this. I mean, I learned a lot and it's really good to, as a creator to, to talk to other creators and see how their workflow is. And it's really inspiring too. So I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Subscribe and we are peace. peace.